Thank you so much for sharing this sort of hot take. Um, I would like to uh, invite our last speaker uh, for ETHDAM to talk about quadratic funding and how all of you will be able to vote and basically have your vote count um, because we don't only want just these top amazing judges to, to be able to have a, a say um, at these hackathons. Please welcome to the stage V from the Ethereum Foundation. Thank you so much. Hey, how's everyone doing? <laughs> that was a bit lukewarm. Um, first things, ah, there we go. I hear some cheers, all right. First things first, I just want to take some time to thank uh, Crypto Canal. Ellie, Fede, Alina, everyone, thank you so much for putting together this event. It has been absolutely wonderful, so big shout out to them. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate you guys for being here, being present. A uh, quick one about me. Uh, my name is V. I am from the Ethereum Foundation's privacy and scaling team. We focus on building on projects that focus on scaling up zero knowledge proof technologies. My focus uh, with regards to privacy and scaling is with uh, quadratic funding. It sounds a bit complex, but really it's Think of it as community funding and potentially a new take on what community funding could look like. Um, let's jump right into it and after the presentation, if there are any questions, feel free to come look for me. I will be at the corner of the stage. So quick walk through the agenda. First we'll look at what public goods are and then we'll try to answer the question around what is quadratic funding. Most importantly, what's in it for you? Why would you, as someone, as a part of the community, why would you want to participate? And last but not least, how do you participate? So first one, what are public goods? Does any, has anyone heard of the term public goods? Give me a show of hands, nice. Wow, everyone's had their coffee, excellent. <laughs> Anyone wants to take a guess at defining what public goods are? Shout out your answers. You get one ETH. Gourley ETH, but same difference really, I'm sure. There you go, exactly, Gourley ETH for you. <laughs> so quick characteristics of public goods. Firstly, they are non-excludable, meaning if I don't like someone here, I still can't exclude you from using it. They are non-rivalrous, meaning that just because I am using something it doesn't mean it's going to reduce the quantity for someone else. And lastly, availability. It can be used by multiple people at the same time, and it's not going to reduce the quantity or quality for anyone. Some examples of public goods, streetlights, roads, libraries, Quick note here, if you don't identify with any of these pictures here, please take a walk outside Amsterdam after this conference. These are all within Amsterdam. I may or may not have gone out for research purposes just to take these pictures. And of course, other examples of public goods being the Ethereum blockchain, as well as in the Web2 space, you're looking at YouTube. And now trying to answer what is quadratic voting, which ties into community funding. So what exactly is this concept of quadratic voting? Think of it as, first and foremost, you have an organization. This could be a government, a nonprofit. What they do is they give a matching pool, which is basically a sum of money. And the people, the community, then can decide 
what should be done with this, full, this pool of money. So if you look at traditional governments, how the structure and rules work is that every year you have a budget allocation and you know, people that we've voted into power governments then decide, okay, um, your budget, maybe 90% is used for defense, 10% is used for public goods. It's, a lot of it is not directly within your control. Whereas if you look at uh, quadratic voting, you get the power to decide which projects that you would like to fund. And all of that money goes towards funding projects that are working on public goods specifically. The entire idea of this is to push power away from Wales and to democratize the voting process. And so just some benefits again. How, firstly, how this works is as an individual, you get a predetermined number of votes and you don't have to vote for just one project. You can vote for a few different projects. Um, again, these projects all have to be working on public goods specifically. So for example, let's say um, you have 10 different projects and I like four of them. I can choose to allocate my votes accordingly to four different projects. Again, what are the benefits? Firstly, you're going to even the distribution of voting. Voting taken away from wheels, taken away from, uh, taking most of the power away from people with the most financial influence and giving it back to the community. It is an extremely decentralized process as well, as this is all of us here in this room voting to select which projects we would like to finance. It's all about giving power back to the community. You get to decide which projects should get funded. You know, for the Lord of the Rings fans here, if you know King Theoden, well, guess what? In Amsterdam, King Theoden does not exist. We have the power here to decide which projects we want to finance. Looking at the key what's in it for us. So we've all benefited from public goods in one way or another at some point in our life. For example, it, since we're all here in Amsterdam, everyone would have benefited from the clean air, from street lights, from public roads. A lot of us here have built on the Ethereum blockchain. So we've all benefited in one way or another. By taking part in this process, what you will do is ensure the continuity of projects working on public goods, because we get to decide which projects we would like to fund, as ultimately, when these projects build on public goods, it is going to benefit all of us here in this room in the long run. As our favorite uncle always says, with great power comes great responsibility. And now going to the key question on how you can participate. Remember to get your private keys. I believe every one of us would have gotten these cards when we were registering. If you don't have it or if you didn't get it, I will be by the side of the stage. This card has your private keys, which you would then need to take part in the voting. Scan this QR code. Where this QR code is going to take you is it will take you to the quadratic voting site. On this site, you will be able to see a short list of the projects from the hackathon vote. Once you have your private keys and you get access to this site, you'd be able to choose which projects you would like to fund for this hackathon. Of course, all of us here, we're all a really important part of this community. The pool for this round is $15,000 that would be allocated across multiple projects. And so when you vote, you get to decide and you play a very important part in deciding which projects and how much of money ends up going to which projects. This is a really brief presentation, but this uh, it brings me to the end of my presentation. 
Again, before I leave, just a note for anyone who does not have their keys, I will be here. If there are also any community leaders that are interested in running a quadratic voting round within their own communities, feel free to come over, have a chat, come say hi. I would love to chat about how we can work together. And that's the end of my presentation. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>